Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In this section we're going to start to look at outline numbering and WBS codes. Now you may not have come across these before so I'm going to start by explaining outline numbering. For this section and the next one I'm going to use this house build project and there's not a lot of detail in it at the moment but there is enough for our purposes in terms of outline numbering. Now something like building a house is a pretty structured kind of project and will very often have a similar structure to other house build projects. Now behind the scenes project 2019 maintains a set of outline numbers for you. And what I want to do first of all is to show you the outline numbers for this particular project. So I'm going to insert a column here to the left of the start column. So I'm going to right click and select insert column. And this one we're going to look for outline numbering. And remember again everything is in alphabetical order in this list. So there it is, outline number. And the outline numbers that are assigned to the tasks follow the same structure of the tasks themselves. So for instance, here we have summary tasks site, base, lockup, and their outline numbers are one, two, three. And within each of those summary tasks, the next level of task has a dot, and then the second part of the outline number. So for example, clear site, is 1.1, set out is 1.2 and so on. So the good news about all of this is that Project 2019 does all the work on maintaining those numbers for you. And for example, if I was to add another subtask underneath clear site, that would take on the numbering format 1.1.2 and so on. So Project 2019 pretty much handles all of this for us, which is great. But you might be thinking, well, what is the point of these outline numbers? Well, they're used to be able to uniquely identify a task within a schedule. And the kind of purpose you may put that to is, for example, if you want to relate materials to a particular task. So if you were to say ordering some steel to use for the structural steel frame here, task ID uh, 21, which has an outline number of 4.3, when you ordered the steel in order to make sure that people knew which particular project and task the steel was for, then you might provide the name of the project and the outline number of the specific task that the steel was to be used for. So it's kind of a way of not only identifying tasks in the project, but also to adding some structure to that identification. Now on the face of it, that sounds like a pretty good idea. But in practice, the use of these outline numbers is a little bit fraught with problems. If you have a very, very fixed structure in your project and possibly you're reusing the same structure over and over again, and there is rarely, if ever, a need to vary that structure, then this approach can work. But if in fact what you need to do is have something that can deal with variations with the addition of new tasks, then it doesn't. Let me quickly show you the sort of problem you get with this approach. Now, when I started, site had the outline uh, number of 1, and clear site had the outline number of 1.1, and set out had the number of 1.2, and they still have those outline numbers. You can see that trim, because it is a subtask of clear site, it became 1.1.1. But supposing that trim had to go in, but it wasn't a subtask of clear sight, it was a subtask of sight. So in other words, it wasn't indented to that third level. Let me outdent it again. And what happens is that the outline number for set out has changed. It started out with the outline number of 1.2, and it now has an outline number of 1.3. So you can see that as you change the structure, particularly if you insert or delete tasks, then outline numbers potentially can change. For example, if I inserted a new summary task between base, which has an outline number of two, and lockup, which has an outline number of three, 
that summary task would get outline number three and everything from lock up onwards would have its outline number changed. So lock up will become four and so on. So although outline numbers work, and as I say, Project 2019 looks after them for you, they are very prone to change if you either introduce tasks into a project or remove tasks from a project, or indeed if you just move the tasks around. Now, as we're going to see later on, there is a way of getting around this problem by using outline codes. But before we look at that, I'd like to look at another feature that is in effect built into Project 2019, and that is the use of WBS codes. And if you're not sure what that stands for, WBS stands for Work Breakdown Structure. Now the default set of WBS codes, like the outline numbers, are maintained by Project 2019. So I've just made a little bit of space here, and I'm going to insert another column and I'm going to insert a WBS column. Now, as we've seen before, we can scroll through the list, right to the bottom to select WBS. Alternatively, to make this a little bit quicker for ourselves, we could use this little search at the top and type in WBS, and that will bring up all of the available options. So I'm going to select WBS, and you can see there it's brought up some numbers which are kind of consistent with the outline numbers that we have. So for example, for the task number one, site, it has an outline number of one and the WBS code currently is 001. Same thing for base, so on and so forth. Now one of the major differences though is that you can customize the WBS codes. Now in order to explain, at least in part, why you might want to customize the WBS codes, let me explain a little about where WBS codes came from. WBS codes originated in government work. In fact, I believe they originate in the US military, possibly specifically the US Navy. And the idea was not only to be able to identify the task activities in a project using a coding system that was understood by everybody involved, but also to do things like relate WBS codes in one project to WBS codes in another project. And what generally happened back then was that when you're dealing with some kind of government project or military project, and this system soon spread pretty much around the world, you would be given WBS codes to use and you would need to set up your project schedule WBS codes so that your project conformed not only to government requirements, but often to international standards in terms of identifying the elements within a project. Now, WBS codes are still used today. They are still very commonly used in government public sector type programs and projects. And in fact, I've used them relatively recently on some of the government projects that I've worked on. But one of the key aspects of WBS codes is that they don't often look as simple as this. The coding system is normally a lot more complex and a lot more specific to the type of project or situation that you're working in. So if you were given a set of WBS codes to use in a project, you would need to know how to customize these standard WBS codes, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. Now, the example I'm going to use is a fictitious example. There aren't any real WBS codes from anywhere, but once you've seen how to do this in a relatively straightforward case, you should be able to do it more generally. So let's see how to set up some WBS codes. Let's jump across to the Project tab, and then within the Properties group, WBS and Define Code. So that brings up the WBS Code Definition dialog. Now, first of all, we have to choose a project code prefix. Now, bear in mind, of course, what I've just said. You'll normally be given all of this, but let's put our own values in here. So our project code prefix is going to be HB01. Perhaps standing for house build 01. And then what we do is we decide how many levels of code we need. Now I'm going to have three levels of code. And the first level is going to be a numbering level. So when I click in sequence just here, I get a drop down list with some options and I'm going to select numbers ordered. 
the length of numbers? Well, I'm going to say it's going to be three. And then I'm going to have a separator of a slash character. And you'll see what all of this means and what it looks like in just a moment. Now, the next one I'm going to use, if I just click the drop down again, and this one is going to be uppercase letters ordered. And maybe we'll just have one character just there. And then for the separator there, I'm going to use a full stop or a dot, which as you saw was the default. And for the third level, I'm going to go back to numbers ordered again. I'm going to say the length is two digits. And the separator there, I'm going to leave that as the default as a dot. And you can see at the top, as I've done that, we now have a code preview. And all of these are now in action in that code preview. What I also have are two checkboxes towards the bottom of the dialog, which says generate WBS codes for new tasks. So that means that when I insert a new task into my schedule, uh, does project 2019 generate this code for me? So I'm going to say yes, which is why I'm going to keep that ticked. If I uncheck that box, I would have to put in my own codes in there. And then there is a second checkbox, verify uniqueness of new WBS codes. So do I want project 2019 to make sure that when I put a WBS code in, it's unique, it's not already been used. So I'm going to say yes to that as well and keep that checked. Now those last two choices are actually very important and particularly if you think about the first one, do you want project to generate WBS codes for you or are you going to enter your own? If you've given all of these WBS codes and they may not follow a very specific sequence, then it's important that you uncheck that because you're going to need to put your own WBS codes in. But as you can see, I've got both boxes checked. I'm going to click on OK and just watch what happens when I do that. Now, all of the tasks in my project have been given WBS codes. Let me bring up that dialogue again. And just look at those three levels that I set up and let's look at the task here, trim. First of all, HB01, project code prefix. Note I didn't put any separator after HB01. It runs straight into the code itself. And the code itself is three numbers in sequence. So 001 is the first. The separator is a slash. Then it's a single uppercase letter. So in this case, A then a full stop, and then an ordered number zero, 01. So that's two numeric digits or number length two. Now, although I specified a separator at the third level because there was no fourth level component for this particular WBS code, because it's only going down to the third level, then I'm getting that separator at the end. Project 2019 knows whether it needs to put in a separator or not. The next task in the plan, of course, project prefix the same, HB01. The first outline level is the same, so I get 001 again. Slash again, but the second level is different, so the letter is B. There is no third level for this particular task, so its WBS code is empty. So it finishes with the B. If you look at the lockup task here, notice how the numbering goes HB001, 003, slash A, slash B, slash C, and so on. So you can see how that numbering system works. If I wanted to uh, separate between the project code and the specific task, all I'd need to do would be to put in here, perhaps I'd put a hyphen in there, for example click on OK, and now all my codes would have a hyphen in there as well. So that's how you set up your WBS codes. And in the next section, we're going to start by looking at how well WBS codes work in terms of giving you a consistent and reliable way of identifying the tasks in a project. But that's in the next section, so I will see you then.